All right, if you want to play by ear and don't know how to start, or maybe you were trained to read first, watch this video for a structured lesson on how to play by ear efficiently. Hi, I'm Donna from DonnaSchwartzMusic.com, the site to boost your playing and improvisation to the next level. Now, recently I got a question from a subscriber about playing by ear. They had, wa they had watched my video, Three Mistakes Musicians Make When Learning Tunes, and they asked this particular question, and this person's name is Patrick Gerber. He said, Donna, I'm an advanced player. I have a degree in music, but I've always struggled with playing by ear. Now." I am trying to meet that challenge, which is awesome, but I'm having difficulty finding an efficient way. Can you help? Do you have any ideas? Yes, I do. I'm going to give you a big strategy, a main strategy, and then I'm going to expand it, and I'm going to use the strategy to help you build your playing by ear, build your ear training, and help you to transpose songs. Now, much of what I'm going to show you in this video comes from music learning theory. This was founded by Dr. Edwin Gordon, who did years and years and years of extensive research into how we learn music, studying children. And I'm going to be using a bunch of terms from this methodology. So the first concept is this. Ideally, the best way to learn how to play music is to start with the ears, not the eyes. Sound before sight. Hey, we hear music, right? So if you don't have enough experience listening to all types of music and all different types of keys and meters and tempos, when you look at the black dots on the page, it's just not going to make sense. So the first step to playing by ear, take a simple song. It could be a nursery rhyme like Hot Cross Buns or Mary Had a Little Lamb. Hey, by the way, my friend Tim Armacost also does a similar example on the song Ferris Jaca in his new book, The Jazz Saxophone Book. I will be doing a review on that, and I did interview him for my Everything Saxophone podcast. Now here's a pro tip. To set yourself up for success when it comes to developing your ears, sing everything. Why? You really don't know if you're hearing something until you're able to sing it, you're able to replicate it, away from the recording, not while it's on. So I'm going to use the nursery rhyme, Hot Cross Buns, and I'm going to ask you a few questions to think about as you listen. So let me take this off my neck, I'm going to put this on my peak music stand, and let me get to the piano. Now as I play and sing this, I'm going to ask you, does this sound like it's in major or minor? Major sounds brighter, minor sounds a little duller. Bum, listen to this. So if you thought that that sounded brighter, yeah, it's in major for sure. Okay, now the next question you want to think about is where's the resting tone? And this is the tone where all the other notes relate, all right? Uh, the notes, the chords, and that kind of thing. It's actually that pitch. We're going to call that do. That's my G on tenor. It's concert F. Okay, so that G, all the chords, notes are related to that. All right, next question deals with, well, rhythm. It's where's the big beat? This is, would be where we would be taking the metronome from. So let me just sing this and, uh, no, I'll play it on the piano. Find the big beat and clap along. Bum, 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 find the big beat. Bum, bum, bum. If you felt, bum, 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 there's your big beat, okay? Next question, how is that divided? How, you know, is the, are the melody rhythms divided? It's divided in twos, divided in threes. So am I going, bum, 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 da, 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 or am I going, bum, 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 Definitely twos, and we call that a duple meter, okay? Duple meter, so big beats are divided into twos. All right, now you may be thinking, who cares? Well, feeling the small beats or the subdivisions as you would know it, helps you to remember the melodies, which leads me to this pro tip. If you wanna remember melodies, it's not just about notes and rhythms, it's about how those notes and rhythms relate to the big beat and also honestly how they relate to the whole song. I call that context. That's my thing there. I'm gonna go much deeper into this, or I go much deeper into this in my courses, Improvisation Made Easy, Boost Your Blues Improvisation, along with my students, my one-to-one -one students, and my high-end coaching group, Improvisation Made Easy Elite Coaching. Okay, I'm gonna go a little fast here. Um, like I mentioned, I go deeper in the other courses. So next question that's really 
important. What's the direction of the melody for each of these phrases? Does each phrase go up, go down, stay around the same note, or all the above? Let's see. Bum, 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 ba, 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 bum, bum, bum. Okay, so bum, bum, ba, that goes down, right? All right, cool. How? By large jumps or like a scale? I kind of gave it away. It's going down like a scale, all right? Now, if you don't know some of this stuff yet, that's okay, because now you're learning difference between and big jumps and small jumps like scales. Okay, so we know it's in major. Um, we know the resting tone is concert F, right? And we know that the melody uh, moves down, the first phrase moves down, all right? And actually, if I think about the whole song, bum, 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 ba, 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 bum, bum, bum. It does all the above. It moves down, sometimes it stays on the same note, and then sometimes it goes up, and then it goes down again. Okay, so that's good information to know. I want you to picture this analogy. I want you to pretend like this is like a big puzzle that you're trying to put together. You got all the pieces thrown down, right? And you're trying to put everything together, but you can't put that puzzle together accurately unless you look on the back of the box or the front of the box with the picture of the puzzle. So it's the picture that we're trying to get here. And the only way to get to the picture is by asking questions and of the music and by listening to and listening for various things. All right, so for the next step, I want to grab my instrument. Um, but I must say, what you really should be doing is listening to the song a lot, asking a lot of questions, and be able to sing the song accurately without anything else going on. You need that because that is like the back of the puzzle box. And you're going to be referring to that frequently as you try to figure it out on your instrument. So what I'm going to do next, boom, 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 boom. I want to try that, find that first pitch. I'm going to play a random note on my horn. I'm just going to play a G. But I'm hearing boom. I'm audiating the first note. And I got to say to myself, is the note I played higher or lower than boom? It's lower. So I've got to find it. So here's how I'm going to do that. Now I matched it. All right, now did you notice I went up a little bit differently? I didn't go random or haphazard. I went up chromatically, I went up half steps so I could make sure I didn't miss that first note of the song. So here is another pro tip. Learn your chromatic scale. Not only will it help you to learn all the notes on your instrument, it's also gonna help you to develop hearing that half step interval, which some people find really challenging. And it'll also help you to find your first note or other notes so you won't miss them. Hey, do you like this video so far? Smash that like button and subscribe to my channel so you know when new videos are out and stay tuned for another pro tip. Now that I know the first note of my horn and I remember that the direction of the melody for the first phrase goes down, I just keep singing and testing on my horn. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, I know it goes down scale-like, so it's probably this. Now, once I get the first phrase, I lather, rinse, and repeat to get the rest of the song. Lather, rinse, repeat. So I've got boom, boom, boom. Happens again. Boom, boom, boom. Ba, 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 ba. What's that? Ba. 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 Oh. Ba, 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 ba. It's going up. Okay, step by. Now, once you get the melody, you're going to work on trying to hear the chords so that you could play around the melody and jazz it up. One more pro tip. As you figure out your songs, think letter names of notes and scale degree numbers. Don't memorize fingering patterns because if you want to continue to build your ears, you want to transpose these simple songs into as many different keys as possible. Transposing into different keys also allows you to hear how the different keys sound. Each key has a different color to it. Let's see.
Okay, quick recap. So in order to develop your playing by ear skills, start with a simple song, hear it a million and a half times, so you can sing it without the recording and make sure you're singing it correctly. That's the picture, you know, the picture of the puzzle box, right? You're going to ask yourself a lot of questions, major, minor, duple, triple, where's the big beats, Where, how are the small beats grouped, what's the direction of the melody for each phrase, then can I find, can I sing the resting tone, that's the note that the melody and the chords relate to, can I find the first note on my instrument, and I gave you that tip to learn your chromatic scale and go up or down uh, that scale to find that first note. Then find the other notes by referring back to your singing of the melody. And as you're figuring it out in your instrument, think of the letter names and scale degrees of the notes, not the fingering patterns, so you could transpose into many other keys. By following this process, not only will you be able to build your skills playing by ear, but you're building your ear training as well. So the process I showed you today is something that I've been teaching for well over 20 years. It comes from my certification in music learning theory, which again was founded and developed by Dr. Edwin Gordon. If you want more information on that, I'm going to put the link in the description below, but you could find them at gimmel.org, G-I-M-L.org. Hey, do me a favor, like and share this video with your musician friends. And if you want more lessons like this with blues, jazz, rock and funk licks, plus lessons on practicing and much more, become a patron and support this channel. Just go to patreon.com slash Donna Schwartz Music. Hey, thanks so much for watching today. On that note, take care. Have a great day.